You know, I must be cursed. For whatever reason, I was born with a visceral aversion to stupid, self-deluding crap. It's part of what makes me the warm, lovable creature you see before you today. It also makes me want to run a backhoe through the endless piles of bullshit legions of women bury themselves in about their own lives. One of those piles of said bullshit was something I overheard once in a coffeehouse conversation. One woman was telling another how much better the planet would be in the hands of women. How men have so much to learn about going green. Then she proceeded to brag about how putting her empty Diet Coke cans in a special garbage can would save the planet. It was an inspiring conversation. Women being men's environmentally conscious superiors is not a new concept. A Google search on women and the environment will take you to a garbage scowl full of similar ideas. Link in the low bar. Listening to those two women, both sporting faces caked with animal-tested cosmetics, reminded me of the cloying sentiments expressed by the conscious men, Gay and Arjuna. Their groveling homage to femininity, as you may recall, was titled Dear Woman, and in it they opined, I honor your deep connection to the earth. Of course, Gay and Arjuna were just two quizlings looking for a deep connection to the fountain of demand for grandiose female disinformation. The piles of bullshit I alluded to just moments ago. Let's take a look at Western women's deep connection to the earth. I mean, outside the worldview of two latte lappers who were more likely than not clueless about how a single thing on the planet with a moving part works, including tank-sized SUVs, one of which they climbed into after polishing off their caramel macchiatos. Speaking of SUVs, the last time I checked, fossil fuel wasn't a gendered product. In fact, I see women living in lit homes full of appliances and driving around in gas-guzzling behemoths of vehicular overkill all the time. The malls where I used to live in Houston designed as they are most everywhere else, almost exclusively for female shoppers, have parking lots full of them. That is not to say that the world's men are putting around in hybrids, but I know that men have nothing on women for fuel consumption. And if we're going to be honest, we know that women like to be driven by men and in style. Like a lot of rank consumerism, it is driven by sexual selection. Apparently, though, proxy pollution doesn't count, but we're just getting started here. Let's consider those shiny little and sometimes not so little pieces of compressed carbon that are so beloved by women that they are considered a girl's best friend. The diamond jewelry trade, an unmistakably female-dominated market, has a curious impact Roughly 4 million people, mostly men and boys, have died in diamond wars, link in the low bar, all for the benefit of women's materialistic gluttony. There have been millions more people displaced by those wars. There have been routine kidnappings to populate a force of involuntary boy soldiers, a slave market, in other words. And to this day, you cannot walk into a jeweler in the U.S. and be certain that you are not buying a diamond that was dug from the ground by a male slave working at gunpoint. All for the sake of women's vanity and social prestige. And as it turns out, most people buying diamonds, which is mostly women or men buying them for women, don't give a shit. In 2004, Amnesty International and Global Witness conducted a survey of 246 diamond retailers in 50 cities across 18 states. 83% of the stores reported that customers rarely or never inquire about conflict diamonds, better known as blood diamonds. And there were 110 stores that refused to take the survey. We have a still robust market for making tiaras go all glittery, and the cost of it is written in unspeakable suffering and mass graves. 
I'm sure the Earth Mother is beaming with pride over that one. Or is that a diamond pendant she's wearing? I wish it stopped with that, but it only starts. Do a YouTube search on fur trade in China. The returns are not something I can recommend you watch. In fact, I seriously warn you against it. And if you're a person who just has to watch something because someone suggested you don't, then proceed carefully. These videos are genuinely horrible. You're better off watching videos of baby seals being clubbed to death. More than half of Chinese fur exports are to the U.S. fashion industry. And yes, while some latte-sipping female liberals have spoken out against wearing animal fur, the simple fact remains that the demand for pelts from animals that are killed for fashion is an almost exclusively female domain. If the Earth Mother is crying about this, I hope it makes her mascara run, because that is another problem. When women put on products made by Avon, Estee Lauder, or any other number of makeup manufacturers, they are part of a system that tests products with really nifty things like a Dray's test, timing how long it takes a hazardous chemical to burn through the cornea of a rabbit. Sometimes it takes days, with the animal suffering the whole time. There's much more than this. There are routine acts of cruelty to animals so savage that they qualify as blood-curdling. I'll spare us both going into any more detail than that. There's a lot of supposedly concerned talk about the treatment of animals in cosmetic testing. A 2011 survey by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine reported that 72% of Americans opposed animal testing of cosmetics. In 2016, however, there were still over 250 cosmetic manufacturers who engaged in the practice, including most of the big names. Links to both are in the low bar. In doing research for this talk, I came across an online makeup consultant at samram1214.blogspot.com who decided to dabble in human decency. She pinned exactly the kind of claptrap I would have expected from someone whose compassion for suffering animals ended with lip gloss. I agree that animal testing is wrong, she said. However, I don't feel that passionate enough to boycott all the brands that test on animals or even to go out and protest. What are your opinions, she asked her readers. Please share. And if you will pardon the comment mining, one of them did share with the following. Said a reader named Cat Lady. I'm also not a fan of animal testing. At one point, I did go a little crazy using Lush products. Now I think it's just me, but they absolutely ruined my skin. It was awful. Even their body scrub makes me break out in hives. So then I decided I'd try Clinique. However, I can't find out whether they test on animals or not. In a way, I really don't want to be feeding companies that test on animals, but I like having clear skin and nice makeup. Smiley face. The blog owner issued a similarly revealing reply. I think Clinique are okay. They don't test on animals to my knowledge, she said. But don't quote me. I might be wrong. I agree, she concluded. I also want good skin care and nice makeup. Clinique, by the way, is owned by Estee Lauder, and they do test on animals, something anyone who is actually interested can find out by asking a search engine. So, as with blood diamonds and human slavery, the lip service paid to the problem of animal cruelty is painted on thick and red. Despite the half-assed bullshit animal cruelty concerns, the priority of looking good is all that really matters. The women from the blog were not looking for a solution to the problem. They just wanted to tell people that they loved animals and looked fabulous while doing it. They were venting a little superficial guilt and moving on, business as usual. When looking good became compromised, animals paid for it by being tortured. These few areas I've covered are really just anecdotes, little microcosms of a much larger picture 
that does not get one bit better. The thing that drives the bulk of pollution, cruelty to animals, human slavery, and other bits of human nastiness is rampant consumerism. Consumerism, especially the market for unnecessary useless goods that come at a high cost, is a woman's world. Women drive a world of pain and damage to the planet, and men, to their shame, do the heavy lifting to get women's bidding done. I cannot think of a single item of mass consumption by men that does not also have a practical and in most cases necessary place in the world. If you can, please help me out in the comments and fill me in. Most money is still earned by men. Most money is actually spent by and on women, largely on the attempt to satiate modern women's bottomless appetite. This is about as green as a fucking oil spill. The sex driving the world's ridiculous overconsumption is not men. In fact, women's level of overconsumption is so outrageous that they cannot satisfy it on their own behalf. It takes both sexes to feed the excessive appetite of the one. If we seriously wanted to reduce the use of fossil fuels, to be more humane to animals, see less slavery, and fewer child soldiers, then the best first step we could take is to start raising girls to get over their vanity and their entitlement. We would also do well to teach our boys to assist those young women in that process.